Do you believe that just a few hundred beavers, those tree-chewing, tail-slapping rodents, could actually turn around the fate of dried-up rivers, scorched riparian forests, and cracked plains in Washington? They were released into dead land, where there were no trees, not a drop of free-flowing water salmon were extinct, and farmers fought over every inch of water. Yet after just a few years, satellites recorded underground water coming back to life, wildfires dropping by 40%, and sockeye salmon returning in droves. So what did these beavers do? Let's uncover this secret right now. Since the early 2000s, heat waves, drought, and wildfires have happened over and over again. Summer water temperatures have risen high enough to kill salmon eggs and stop adult fish from migrating. Then came the wildfires, which burned up 70% of the riparian forests. With no shade left, the ground was bare, and streams eroded and evaporated faster than ever before. But that wasn't all. When rain finally fell on the scorched water-repellent land, instead of soaking in the water, just slid away, carrying mud ash branches and even leftover salmon eggs with it, causing thick black mudslides that wiped out everything in their path. During the dry season, up to 70% of the Yakima River's flow was just reused, wastewater full of nitrates, phosphates, and pesticides, turning the river into a toxic algae soup boiling under the summer sun. All of this added up to a deadly cycle drought, wildfire, forest loss, mudslides, erosion, dead fish, and dead land. Faced with severe drought, many solutions were proposed. Building water storage reservoirs cost anywhere from $500,000 to $2 million each and disrupted the natural landscape. Installing pipelines from major rivers ran into legal and environmental hurdles. Some groups tried artificial dam models in Utah and Oregon, but according to a 2017 study by the University of Idaho, these structures were easily damaged by heavy rain required constant maintenance and couldn't replace the complex ecological role of real beavers. Then, a bold idea emerged. Let beavers go back to doing what they do best. It sounded crazy, but everyone from farmers to ecologists agreed on it. Why did people believe that such a small animal could replace modern human-made projects? Because they understood that before the Methow and Yakima regions became so dry, these places used to have thousands of beaver dams, each one a natural water storage plant. These dams regulated water flow, trapped sediment, cooled water temperatures, and supported entire wetland ecosystems. When beavers were hunted nearly to extinction, those biological pumping stations disappeared, leaving the rivers dry and empty. The American Fisheries Society once warned losing beaver dams means losing one of the most important wetland ecosystems in the American West. Mistakes kept piling up, people thought they could replace nature with engineering. Winding streams were straightened, riverbeds were lined with concrete, and water was forced to flow as quickly as possible. But in winter, this led to severe flash floods, and in summer, the rivers dried up completely. Clearly, no man-made structure could match what beavers had accomplished over millions of years of evolution. So in 2007, one of the most innovative ecological restoration projects in America was launched the Methow Beaver Project. Beavers that were causing trouble in cities or lowland farms were trapped, given health checks fitted with GPS chips named and transported by special trucks to the Methow and Yakima Highlands, the land that was once home to their ancestors. During some releases, local Native American communities like the Colville tribe even performed sage smoke ceremonies. What's amazing is how affordable it was just $2,000 to $3,000 per beaver pair, including transport monitoring and follow-up a cost that's 20 times cheaper than building an equivalent artificial dam. By 2021, the Methow watershed alone had more than 240 beavers reintroduced at over 50 sites with a remarkable 64% settlement success rate, an impressive number for such territorial animals. When the first beavers returned to the Methow and Yakima watersheds, people only hoped they would stick around, chew on a few branches, and maybe build some small dams. But no one expected them to actually bring this desert back to life. Within just a few seasons, the beavers started building dams. Water spread out ponds, formed tree roots, drew up moisture, and green grass began to grow again. Only a few weeks after being released, the beavers built their first dams, 
just two to three feet high, nothing special to look at. Yet these were enough to slow down the water, create natural retention ponds, and restore moisture to the parched land. Each dam worked like an ecological smart valve, holding water in the spring instead of letting snowmelt rush straight out to the sea in a matter of days. Thanks to these small dams, the flow was stretched out over weeks or even months, creating underground water channels that spread hundreds of meters. As moisture stayed longer in the soil, something almost miraculous happened. The ground cooled down, microbes thrived, earthworms and insects returned, and a layer of fertile humus slowly formed. In just a few years, scientists at Washington State University recorded organic carbon levels in soil around beaver dams, increasing by 30 to 50 percent, creating ideal conditions for native plants like willows, cottonwoods, and cattails to grow. Would you believe that beavers are also helping to prevent wildfires? By keeping the soil moist, and lowering ground temperatures, a study in the Journal of Ecological Applications showed that in five major wildfires over 10 years, areas with beavers lost only 2 to 3 percent of their trees, while other areas lost up to 60 percent. The wetland ecosystems beavers create have significantly reduced firefighting costs, saving $15,000 to $25,000 a year in some places. Tree roots hold the soil leaves, filter the water and grass, and shrubs become shelter for birds, frogs, and pollinating insects small but essential links in the entire food chain. As forests grow back, their shade keeps streams cool, maintaining temperatures below 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, the critical threshold for salmon eggs to survive. Because of this, the density of young Chinook salmon in areas with beaver dams is five times higher than in places without them, and survival rates from egg to young fish have risen from 27% to 33%. With their porous structure, beaver dams allow fish to swim through creating gentle flows instead of the hard barriers of concrete dams. Even human-made beaver dam analogs, BDAs, have shown similar results at a stream in Oregon over 120 BDA structures helped boost the survival rate of young steelhead trout by more than 50%. As the land recovers, forests regrow, insects multiply salmon, swim upstream, and the entire web of biodiversity is reactivated. Moose, mink, muskrats, water birds, and native insects all return. The riverbanks once biodiversity hotspots come back to life all thanks to these silent engineers called beavers. And what amazes resource managers most is the almost zero cost. A report from Okanogan County showed that artificial restoration is 40 times more expensive than letting beavers do the work. A single beaver dam stable for three years can save farmers $3,000 to $7,000 each dry season just in electricity and irrigation costs alone. Even though beavers have proven to play a crucial role in ecosystem restoration, not every aspect of their presence is positive. After the significant successes in the Methow and Yakima watersheds, there are still downsides and limitations that can't be ignored. One of the most common conflicts between people and wildlife is between beavers and farmers. With their instinct to cut down trees and build dams, beavers don't distinguish between wild trees and fruit trees. In Okanagan, Washington, many farm owners have reported losing thousands of dollars each season because beavers destroyed dozens of apple and pear trees in a single night. When beavers build dams in the wrong places, it can flood farmland, block irrigation water, and even damage ditches, drainage pipes, or rural roads. According to the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, about 15 to 20 percent of beaver complaints each year are related to agriculture and irrigation. Beyond affecting production, beaver dams can also disrupt existing water management systems that are designed for household use industry and flood control. During heavy rain, if a beaver dam breaks, the sudden rush of water can cause local flooding downstream, especially in residential areas along streams. Simply releasing beavers and calling it done isn't practical everywhere either. Urbanized areas, places lacking woody plants or streams that don't flow year-round, can't support stable beaver populations. Legal and social barriers are also major issues. As many as 40 states in the United States don't have clear beaver protection policies, meaning conservation programs depend on local regulations and community support. Without coordination, conflicts between ecological goals and economic interests can easily flare up, 
While beavers aren't a magic key for every landscape, they are still considered one of the most successful models of ecological restoration in the 21st century. Thanks to their wide-ranging effectiveness, the beaver model has spread far beyond the United States reaching across the globe, from the great rivers of North America to the semi-arid regions of Europe. In Canada in 2011, a leak of more than 28,000 barrels of oil near the village of Little Buffalo almost became an environmental disaster. Human emergency systems hadn't even responded yet when a natural beaver dam managed to lock in the oil saving the river. This is a prime example showing that beavers can sometimes do things faster than even the most advanced technology. In the United States, especially in the Chesapeake Bay, beaver ponds have proven to be powerful natural filters removing up to 45% of the nitrogen responsible for algae blooms. To achieve the same results, wastewater treatment plants would have to spend millions of dollars and consume energy non-stop. This raises the question, can a small rodent really replace an entire water treatment industry? Meanwhile, in Alberta, Canada, the world has marveled at the beaver wonder in Wood Buffalo National Park, a dam stretching 850 meters over half a mile, far longer than the famous human-built Hoover Dam. Researchers estimate it took seven generations of beavers to complete this structure, a testament to their endurance and determination that humans can hardly match. And the latest story from May 2025 in the Czech Republic left ecologists both laughing and amazed. After seven years stuck in paperwork and spending over 30 billion trying to restore the Bodny wetland, with no success, just eight beavers released into the area built a chain of dams in only two days. The results were so impressive that experts admitted they did it even better than our blueprints. Just weeks later, crayfish rare green frogs and migratory birds had returned to speed of recovery that every artificial project can only dream of. Back to the beavers in Washington, have you ever wondered what their future holds as the ecosystem gradually stabilizes? The answer is beginning to emerge, and it might just surprise you. Today, organizations like the Methow Beaver Project and the Beaver Restoration Coalition aren't just reintroducing beavers to the Methow Yakima or Okanogan watersheds. They've entered a new phase of restoration, blending the beaver's ancient instincts with modern technology. Researchers are now deploying thermal sensors, soil moisture monitors, and AI systems to track beaver behavior, not only measuring each dam, but also recording the ripple effects on the entire ecosystem groundwater levels the return of wading birds' crop yields and the speed of riparian forest recovery. According to a 2024 report from the Washington State Department of Ecology areas where beavers have returned are holding 15 to 20 percent more water in the summer, reducing wildfire risk by up to 40 percent and doubling the diversity of aquatic plants compared to places without beaver dams. Over the next 10 years, Washington plans to restore at least 500 kilometers of headwater streams using beaver technology. The goal isn't just ecological, it's cultural. Two training indigenous communities, farmers, and even school children to become co-authors of the restoration process. So if you picture cracked fields where every summer means fighting over each drop of water, imagine instead a different future, a Pacific Northwest where rivers no longer run dry, where thousands of salmon return each season, and where farmers and wildlife don't compete but thrive together in a self-sustaining landscape engineered by nature's oldest water managers. And the lesson here isn't just about biology, it's about trust. In a world where we're told that every solution must come from high-tech labs, billion-dollar projects, or endless streams of data, a small, tree-chewing, tail-slapping creature reminds us of something bigger. Nature doesn't always need to be reinvented. It simply needs to be allowed to work. The message is clear, ecological restoration doesn't have to feel impossible or out of reach. Sometimes the most powerful solution is to step back and let the original forest engineers do what they've perfected over 10 million years. If beavers can revive a dying river, maybe it's time for us to relearn how to listen to the land, to the water, and to the flow of life itself. And that's the incredible but true story of how hundreds of beavers quietly brought dead landscapes back to life armed with nothing more than wood water and patience. If this story amazed you or if you ever thought only humans could rebuild the world, leave a comment below and share your thoughts on this upside-down ecological solution. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next story. 
because when it comes to nature, the plot twists are always more unbelievable than fiction.